Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this final dissection, then, of the head and neck, you will be looking at an area that lies deep to the bone in this region. This is the ridge of the petrous portion of the temporal bone. It is going to house, then, the hearing and balance apparatus and the pathway for the seventh cranial nerve. To expose this region, we need to make a series of cuts to allow adequate orientation of chisels and saws to clear this area. The cuts have already been made on this particular specimen and are outlined in your guide, but they pass down, as I'm showing you here, in this fashion. If the bone is removed in that area, we will then be able to expose this area for adequate approach. The cuts that we will be making are related then to some landmarks, and let's go through those spots now. Here we have the internal auditory meatus with the nerves passing through them. As we shift anteriorly, in this region we can locate the foramen spinosum, which is going to transmit the middle meningeal artery. The first cut then is going to be oriented across the petrous ridge just lateral to the internal auditory meatus and will pass forward directed toward foramen spinosum. A second cut will be placed parallel then to it in this region. The cut that is this medial cut should not pass beneath the level of the midpoint of the foramen or auditory meatus. And now we'll begin the cuts in this direction. The cuts have now been placed. As you can see, here is the first cut, the second one across in this direction. We want to be careful that we don't make those cuts too deeply here. Here again is our landmark of the internal auditory meatus here, and this is the level then. Now, with a chisel, we want to direct that blow such that we knock the top off of the petrous portion of temporal bone, and we'll do that now. Now, occasionally, you'll see that it will come off in, in a couple of pieces, but All right, now, basically, with the roof of this area removed, we are going to pass then into the middle ear cavity. Now, actually, at this point, we do need to open this just a little bit further. Once that's removed, the middle ear cavity becomes more apparent. The first thing that you'll want to realize is that within the middle ear cavity, a uh, mucous membrane is going to cover all of the structures so that your first bit of work then is going to be to peel off that mucous membrane to break away some of these margins to identify some of the structures and continue down. Now we can see already in this opening, at this point, the head of the malleus. The malleus um, it, head is going to be one of the first major structures of the middle ear cavity that you will identify. In addition to the cut you have just seen made, we can then open this middle ear region to the external canal by placing two cuts across from the level of the external canal to the inner ear. But those two cuts are usually made after you have identified some structures in this region. The cut is then cut through here, here, and the roof then removed. Now we've done exactly that in the next specimen that I want to show you. Here, we can see the 
for orientation, we have the petrous portion of temporal bone. We've removed that. And we can see the external ear at this point. The bone has also been removed in this region, making that second series of cuts that I was going to tell you. Now, we can remove this ear to just expose this area a little more completely. As the middle ear is thus exposed, we can identify the structures of this region. The ear is divided up into an outer, middle, and bony inner ear in this region. The middle and outer ear are then separated by the tympanic membrane. Entering this area are two nerves which are passing in the internal auditory meatus, which we see here. The two nerves that enter there are shown again here. Here is the auditory or statoacoustic nerve, and just anterior to it then, the seventh cranial nerve. The seventh cranial nerve, if you'll recall, exits the skull through three foramina. Its major path is through petrous portion and temporal bone. It angles sharply at this point, known as the knee or genu, and continues here to pass deeply toward the stylomastoid foramen. Before exiting there, it gives off a branch which will arise and come back up into the middle ear cavity. And we can see here one of the landmarks that needs to be used for identifying that. This is the area of the incus, and here we have the malleus. The corda tympani arches up deep to this crus of the incus, and you can see it again appearing here. This will now pass down into the petrotympanic fissure near the mandibular fossa. The third branch of the seven comes off at the area of the genu and is going to pass then forward in bone along here as the greater petrosal nerve. The greater petrosal nerve then passing into the middle cranial fossa in this region. Next to it, we can see the lesser petrosal nerve running through bone and passing in this direction. This then basically is the pathway of the seventh cranial nerve. Other features of the middle ear cavity you should identify by carefully working through this area. One of the things that we can see at this point is a tendon which is going to pass through in this region. And as soon as I stop moving this, we can all get reoriented again. There we are. Um, here we can see that tendon. This is the tendon of the tensor tympani muscle. The muscle itself is oriented in this direction and is passing then back along the pathway of the auditory tube. The muscle passes up, comes across, and turns to come into the malleus at this point. We can see the point then, or the cone, of the tympanic membrane at that point. And you can see it move by moving the auditory ossicles in this fashion. The stapedius muscle and other features you should identify by careful dissection of this region. Now then, the middle ear cavity is associated with the nasopharynx, as we have realized earlier. And I'd like to show you that now. In this particular specimen, in which we have been able to pass more uh, deeply into the area of the petrous portion of temporal bone, you'll see that there's a wire which is introduced into the auditory tube. And if you remember from your earlier dissection, the auditory tube, and we can see the wire moving again here, comes into the nasopharynx in this region. Here's the auditory tube. We are in the nasopharynx, soft palate in this region. That then is the continuity back to the middle ear. If we withdraw that wire, we can see deep to it now the annulus of the tympanic membrane in this particular specimen. And we can see again features of this region. For example, the incus here, malleus, and the entire annulus then for the membrane. You'll notice that the membrane is not at right angles to the external auditory tube, but on a rather oblique position. This then would complete your view 
of the area. Um, I should be sure to warn you that you should look at other specimens. Each one of these breaks through the petrous portion of temporal bone will be somewhat different from table to table, and you definitely, after understanding yours, should become oriented on others. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.